Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and the other day I was thinking to myself, you know, art isn't really eco-friendly, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be that way. Stick around. So when you think about the visual arts, you kind of think, hey, I'm going to grab my paints and my canvas and all this stuff, and you start making art, and after a while it's like, you know, there's kind of a downside to the visual arts and that it's very, very wasteful. The best supplies for the best results kind of have to be fresh. They can't really be recycled a lot of times because it's like, well, then you kind of get an undesirable result. Plus some pigments or just some paints in general, like acrylics, aren't very green. Acrylics are made of plastic. They never really decompose. So as an artist, if you want to be a little more earth conscious, here's a few ways that you can kind of help yourself out. Certain companies do advertise alternative materials or those made with sort of renewable energy. For example, Strathmore makes a paper called Wind Power. Uh, personally, it's not my favorite particular type of paper. I don't really like the, the texture and the weight to it, so I don't really use it for that reason. But it's a great choice if you're looking for uh, a paper choice that is maybe a little more earth conscious. You could also choose any sort of recycled papers, recycled materials, or just grabbing perhaps a hunk of cardboard that somebody was using for something else. Using old food boxes, whatever you happen to grab and use on hand. Great ways to uh, grab materials that maybe you might not have thought of otherwise. On the drawing side, think about things like charcoal and some Conte and pastels because it's really just compressed uh, pigment or compressed chalk or charcoal or whatever it happens to be. Those are infinitely renewable sources and really they're just sort of the, that last little bit uh, in terms of charcoal. It's that last little bit of burnt something which then becomes something that you can use to create stuff of your own. As I mentioned before, acrylics, because they're plastic, they don't biodegrade, they don't really decompose, at least not for a while or maybe not ever. I haven't really looked into it that far. But if you want to think, okay, maybe I don't want to use acrylics because, you know, I'm trying to save the planet. So some oils have a better specific binder. Linseed oil will break down over time. Of course, well, so will your, so will your art. Uh, but if you're looking for something that maybe agriculturally is a little bit better, uh, there are Cassian, or maybe it's Cassian colors, which are actually a milk-based paint. Uh, there's a handful of companies still making traditional egg tempera and tubing it, as well as... Uh, certain watercolors which actually use honey as a binder. Although, given recent history, honey is kind of endangered. Additionally, you can use found substrates to paint on. So what do I mean by that? Well, hunks of driftwood, uh, old lumber, timber, uh, grabbing, perhaps someone's throwing this table out. Well, take the table, take the top off, cut it down. Congratulations, now you've got wood panels. At the end of the day, though, it's really just about your specific preferences for art. Me. I like nice, clean, new materials and stuff that's going to last a while. However, there is actually a growing market for people looking at uh, sort of renewable art or art using recycled materials. That's kind of a big thing right now. As an artist, you have to really think about what you want to do and what you want to say with your work. Uh, while a renewable material might not last as long, it might not be super archival or it might sort of really kind of get destroyed through time and wear and things that aren't light fast, things like that. If that doesn't really bother you, go ahead, use some recycled materials. It's actually a lot cheaper that way, too. But just because it's sustainable doesn't necessarily mean your work is going to last. Now, some people are going to say, well, let's just kick all the materials out and go digital. Well, you can do that, and it does sort of help eliminate some of your carbon footprint. But keep in mind, you are using electricity, and after a while, your computer and your tablet are going to have to be uh, upgraded causing uh, a bit of hopefully recycled electronics, but e-waste is also a pretty big issue right now. So just because you're switching to digital doesn't necessarily mean that you're not creating waste. So the big question at the end of the day, should you go eco with your art? Yeah, I think it's really up to you. Personally, I think if there's going to be one thing in my life that I pretty much ignore uh, eco stuff with, I'll let it be my work. I'd much rather spend more money and spend uh, more time to make a piece that'll last, that a piece that'll stand the test of time, versus maybe a slight inconvenience for the planet. As George Carlin once put it, the planet is fine, the people are f***ed. So I hope this video has kind of opened your eyes a little bit on the sort of amounts and types of waste that your art can kind of produce. Is it the best thing for the environment to be an artist? Probably not. But if you're going to love creating, you might as well create. 
So, as always, be sure to hit that like button if you learned something, get subscribed if you're not already, consider supporting on Patreon, following on Instagram, uh, liking the page on Facebook and DeviantArt, as well as checking out new stuff on my website. This has been from Cinderblock Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. And the studio is a mess. I gotta clean some stuff up, okay? Stuff everywhere right now. Tripping over everything. <laughs>